This is piece 238, Electronic Superhighway by Nam June Pike. I hope you recognize the scene here. The electronic superhighway was inspired by the highway system of the United States, which is hugely elaborate. And there were neon lights and ho you know hotels with neon lights, restaurant signs with neon lights that inspired Nam June Pike's piece. It is 15 feet high, 40 feet wide, and it is a map of the United States and Hawaii and Alaska. There are 600 feet of neon tubing outlining the 50 states, and each, each state, each of the 50 states has within it a various number of TV screens that shows video clips of what uh, Pike interpreted as being important for that state's history. In particular here at the Washington DC site, he included a closed circuit camera and visitors standing here in front of this electronic superhighway art can see themselves projected in Washington DC so that they feel like they are a part of this art and this landscape. So on each of the 365 displays that he had, Pike picked as I said, what he felt was most memorable for each state. For example, Alabama has Dr. King fighting for civil rights. In the Kentucky, it's the Kentucky Derby. In Illinois, you see over here, there's Abraham Lincoln. Kansas has got the Wizard of Oz. And these videos, I'll show you a clip of it in class. They are all running very fast. And this imitates quick movement on our highway system. Interestingly, for this piece and just for art in general, we wonder to what extent should curators be preserving art, maintaining it if it becomes obsolete in this case. So the cathode to ray tubes that are initially placed in these TVs are going bad and can't be replaced. And so the curators at the Smithsonian Museum, where this is located, will have been adapting these screens to flat screens. And so the question re is out there also among art folks is, to what extent is this performance art? Because any moment of the day, you get a different view. It's not static like the Mona Lisa is. Rather, the tubes warm up, electronics heat up, and the, the picture on the screen changes. It's color, its hue, and so you can see that with these six different screens here for Colorado. Washington has portrayed here a man, I think he's from Centralia, uh, Merce Cunningham, who is a dancer. I did not know who he was before this. He is evidently connected to Nam June Pike, or was, both are deceased. And um, you can see for the state of Washington that there are um, one, two, four, six different screens, all projecting the same thing, Merce Cunningham. Because there's so much here in terms of content, it's hard to take everything in. And so Nam June Pike was really demonstrating how our culture is impacted by technology and this experience of information overload that we, I think, experience every day. And how I think how it numbs us, that's not been addressed in this art, but that's what I would say is happening from my online teaching experience. Okay, so the function here is to convey the idea that communication would be boundaryless with the advent of more technology. Communication right, would transcend borders some context here, Nam June Pike, a Korean American who emigrated in 1964, I think, to the United States. He um, was a member of a group called the Fluxus Group. And members of the Fluxus Group of Art, they believe that 
galleries and museums should not be the only definers of what art is. And this seems to be a theme in our contemporary pieces, I hope you've noticed. Rather, he they felt that everyday objects could be used in art and that the viewer could be involved in art and that could take place outside of a gallery and could be spontaneous and different every time that it was displayed. Here are, here's a picture actually of Nam June Pike. Seems like a fun guy. And this is one of his sculptures titled Magnetic or Magnet TV, where the magnet influenced what was portrayed on the screen based on you know, this electronic interaction of magnetics. And then you also want to be made aware of this favorite sculpture of Nam June Pike. And this is called the TV Buddha. He had multiple of them, evidently. This happens to be a 1700s Buddha that he found was sold on Canal Street in New York City. This is a camera filming the Buddha. And so the Buddha is looking at himself on TV. I find that super funny and ironic. Uh, so more examples of his sculptures. Here is what's called TV Garden. This is in the Guggenheim Museum, which we will see coming up. It's actually, it's one of our next to last pieces of art. And here we have TV sets dispersed among live plants. And this is what's called the V Pyramid. Nam June Pike was famous for taking lots of TVs and stacking them as high as he could in these pyramidal sculptures. So electronic superhighway, like Route 66, where the movie Cars was filmed, and we take from that the neon signs used to light up the restaurants and the hotels or motels, and of course, isn't Nader, just your favorite character. <laughs> 